I've got something here, Jeff. Stick that in there if you don't mind. Amen. Matthew chapter number three. Matthew chapter three this evening. Uh, let's, let's get in the book here just, just for a few minutes. And uh, look here at the baptism of the Lord Jesus Christ just for a minute tonight. And I'm going to say a couple things about it and then we'll proceed. Matthew chapter number three. Um, excuse me. Uh, verse 13. Matthew chapter three and verse 13. Just one tap, Kevin. Amen. Matthew chapter three and verse 13. Down just a tad. Please. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. It's the start of New Testament. They do that in the Old Testament. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? He said, Lord, good night. I'm going to need to get baptized. What are you doing coming down here? And look what Jesus said. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. Hold your finger there. Out of the water. Jesus come up out of the water. There's whole denominations, Presbyterian, uh, Catholic, a lot of uh, teach that water is just sprinkled on your head. And that's baptism. That is not baptism. That ain't even the definition of the word. That word means immerse, to put under. See, like this right here, this water. I can't just sprinkle water on your head. That don't do no good. That's a picture of the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus. When Jesus died, they didn't lean him up against a tree and sprinkle dirt on his head. They put him in the ground, all the way in, and he came out. That's a picture of what that right there is. Now, look at the rest of it. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. I'm not sure it's in the shape of a dove like I usually draw it. It said it descended like a dove. And another place said bodily shape, like a dove. So it might have been the shape of a man, but like a dove going down path. I don't know that. And a lower voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Three things about baptism uh, I want you to see. Number one, what is it? What is it? The word baptize means to immerse. It means to submerge like a submarine. A submarine goes under the water, down in the water. That's what uh, it, baptism means, under the water. It's a picture of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Now, uh, as I said, it's not, it's not sprinkling. And it, what is it? Um, it is putting you under the water as a picture of Jesus dying and being risen again from, from the dead. The Bible said there in Romans, know ye not that you were baptized into his death. It shows three things. You're dead, you're covered with dirt, and you come up again. Now, that means when you come down here to the altar and y'all got saved, you got saved here at the church, or you got saved at camp, or you got saved at Bible school or whatever, what you done, when you come down here and get saved, you're saying, Lord, I'm, I, this is not the scriptural way of saying it, but you, you give your life to the Lord. Technically, you don't give your life to the Lord, but you know what I mean. Uh, you say, Lord, I want you to be in control of my life. I want you to take charge. I belong to you. You are entering into a relationship with Jesus Christ, and I'm telling you, that Bible teaches that he is to be Lord. You don't do anything to get saved. You don't do anything to stay saved. But everybody who comes to the Lord must recognize Him as Lord. As Lord. Uh, some weirdo writes us once in a while, and it said, uh, do you believe a person has to change? No, you don't get saved by changing. You don't get saved by giving up stuff. But I tell you, there's got to be a point in your life where you're going to say, I accept Him as Lord. You know what Lord means? Master. Master. It don't mean you'll quit sinning, but it means you'll want to. You'll want to do right. You'll want to serve God. That has nothing to do with your salvation. But when you become a new creature, there's something in you that changes people. It changes. 
There's, there's a new life and it changes when you get saved and you're born again. Now, look here. Um, I told the uh, candidates in there a while ago, uh, I told them about this. Now look, I'm up here. Uh, I told them that, they said, look, when you get, when a woman gets married, when a woman gets married, she goes, stands before the preacher or whoever, and they stand there and this man puts a ring on her finger. And when they get married, he puts that ring on her finger. That right there seals that and shows to the world she's married. She's married. Now, it don't make her married. It shows she is married. You listen? That don't make her married. It shows she is married. Does that make sense? There you nod your head. You understand? That don't make her. Look, you put on a wedding band all day long. That don't make you married. But when you do get married and you put that ring on, that's a sign to everybody in the world, I'm married. I've seen these guys a lot of times. They're out here hunting a girlfriend. I mean, if you have to hunt one all the time, you might need to look in the mirror or check up or do something. Or I don't know. Go buy, buy a Corvette or something. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. I didn't mean that. Uh, that's sad. The only way a man can get a girlfriend and get a car. That's awful. Uh, but anyway... Uh, I've seen these guys, and a girl will come in, and I've seen them to look down like this to see, to see if she's married. And uh, that's sad, isn't it? But I've seen them, a lot of them do it. And uh, what that means is, I'm going to see if she's taken. She belongs to somebody else. And that's, and that's a sign. That don't mean that, don't make her married. It shows that she is. So when you get baptized, that don't make you saved. It's showing the world that you are saved. Amen. Amen? That's got nothing to do with your soul. That don't touch your soul. That don't touch your sins. You know, all them old songs, I went down there at the river and washed my sins away. No, you didn't. No, you didn't go down the river and wash your sins away. Your sin better be gone before you get in that. That ain't going to do you a bit of good. You'll just go down a dry center and come up a wet. That's all it's going to be. That ain't going to help you one bit. Just get you wet. Out, my sins are already gone. So when I go down in this water, that shows how Jesus died. He put in the ground, in the ground. He come back up the third day. That is a picture, ladies and gentlemen, of how our old life is gone. The old daddy, he died. He died right there on the altar. And I bur buried him. And I come up to live a new life. Glory to God. But I'm glad tonight. I, I, listen, you can see a difference in some of these young people's lives. Amen? You can see a difference in the way they are. And listen, y'all. You know, like when a, when a woman gets married and she's got that ring on and, uh, and it shows to the world that she's saved. When you do what you're doing here tonight, you know what you're saying to the world? You're saying, I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus Christ. You don't have a right to do what you want to do. You don't have a right to go where you want to go. You don't have a right to say what you want to say. You don't belong to yourself no more. You are not your own. The Bible says you are not your own. So that it ain't. This ain't. Nothing, this ain't a joke. This ain't nothing you do just laughing and cutting up like it's something. Like that. You are saying to the world, "I belong to Jesus Christ." Amen. You understand that? Everybody understand that? You belong to Jesus now. You don't belong to yourself. You don't belong to the Light Baptist Church. You belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, my job tonight, my main job in life is to please Him and live for Him and do what He wants me to do. That's my greatest opportunity and job here this evening is to do what the Lord wants me to do. And yours too. Yours too. It's a privilege to serve God. If you got this attitude, oh gosh, it's Sunday, I gotta go to church. Ain't something wrong with you. Ain't something wrong with you. Listen, I didn't come to church this morning because I had to. I didn't have to. I come because I wanted to. I'm not here tonight because I have to. I get fired if I wasn't, probably, uh, and should. Uh, but I come because I wanted to. And if I wasn't the pastor, I'd still be here. I'd be here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, prayer meeting night, visitation, Sunday school. I would. I'd back up my church. I'm not because I have to, because I want to. Amen. Now, listen. Uh, what is it? It's a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection. Why is it? It shows obedience to the world of what was happening inside. Why did Jesus get baptized? Why did he even do that? He was perfect. Jesus didn't get saved. He didn't get saved. He didn't have to get saved. He didn't need to be saved. He'd never sinned. He never had a sin nature. He got, you know what he said? He told John, he said, put me in there. 
And John said, my goodness, Lord, I, I can't baptize you. You ought to be baptizing me. And Jesus said, it's a righteous thing to do, John. I'm going to set an example. I'm not going to ask these people to do something I won't do myself. And he, he was baptized to set an example. Romans 6 and verse 4 says, we're buried with him by baptism. Amen. I heard about this guy. This guy was going to get baptized one night. And he's getting ready to put him in the water. And uh, he, he, he went down there and, and they, uh, before he did, he, um, he took off his watch. He took off his, uh, you know, put, emptied out his pockets and everything. And uh, he said, well, let me get my wallet. I said, you might ought to leave that wallet in there. It probably needs to get baptized too. <laughs> Amen. That's right. I know some people, their wallet needs to get baptized. Uh, it, they, they must, it didn't work. Um, or something, something went wrong. They were buried with him and baptized. Now, where is it? Where should you get baptized? I know we're out in the country. We used to have baptism years ago when I first started pastoring up in, uh, uh, or down where Buck Creek comes out of the mountains above Marion. And we had baptism in there. My Uncle Ralph built, uh, you can still go see it, at Carson's Chapel right above Marion there on Tom's Creek Road. And you can go up there to this day. There's a rock pulpit. And there's a big rock area about as big as that platform there. And there's water coming into there. And hundreds and hundreds of baptisms have been held there. And we did that for many, many years. Matter of fact, there are some of the old timers that don't even believe in them things right there. They believe you have to get baptized in the river. Now, that, that's, that's okay, but it ain't right. There, you have, all, the Bible said, you know what the Bible said? John baptized there because there was much water there. All you have to have is much water. That's it. It don't have to, I mean, if you're going to push it that far, we'd all have to go to the Holy Land and get baptized in the River Jordan or, or something like that. No, we don't have to do that. Water. People baptize in, in them big troughs and them big old, big old things you feed cows, cows and horses with, and a lot of churches have them. It does not matter. People get baptized in swimming pools. People get baptized in a lot of different places like that. Just as long as you got water to put you under. It's not the stream. It's not the river. It's not, that, that, that doesn't, you know, the river don't wash your sins away. It's, it's getting down under there showing what it is. Amen? People do it in lakes. People do it in horse troughs. People do it in creeks. People do it in, in, uh, in uh, baptistries like we have here. Thank the Lord for that. Very convenient and very good for everybody to see. And I praise God for it. So what is it? It's a picture of the death and burial of Jesus. What does it represent? His death. Where is it? Anywhere there's enough water. And that's what we're going to do here this evening. Now, the question is tonight, I told them back there when we had the meeting, you got to make sure you're saved first. If you're not saved, getting baptized don't help you one bit. you got to get saved first, and then you get baptized. you got to make sure of that. Okay? Now, everybody understand that. That's what we're going to do. All right. Let's bow our head for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for our health and our strength and all the many, many blessings of life. God, we thank you for being good to us. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness on our lives. We pray now, Lord, that you'd bless every single person here tonight who's being baptized. I pray that they'd live their life for you and serve you all the days of their life. God, do what ought to be done in our hearts this evening. Bless the remainder of this service. Let it be special and real, especially to all these young people. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hear that ringing? Um, all right. Now, Luke, he's going to sing a song. And as, as you just listen to this song, y'all can go ahead and get ready. Okay? Amen. Go ahead.